morning, happy Friday, if you happen to be watching this on Friday, but if not, happy day. Um, today, our name of God is Jehovah Ori, which means the Lord my light. And I don't know about you, but this is my favourite time of year. And the reason is, is that it's beautiful summer, um, but also it hasn't yet got to the point where the days start getting shorter. So the days are still getting longer. We are seeing more and more light every day. And one of my reasons for that is, small confession here, I'm still even at this age, a little bit scared of the dark. Now, one of the first things that God said in the Bible was, let there be light. So actually, the first thing God did in the Bible, because when he said that, light was created. So God created light. And then the second thing God did was he separated light from darkness. Now, notice God didn't create darkness because darkness isn't actually a thing. Um, when you read about it in science, darkness is the absence of light. So it's not actually something that God could create because actually he created light, um, which is a thing. But darkness is the absence of that light. So. Looking further on in the Bible, in John chapter 8, Jesus then says, I am the light of the world. And we see um, in Luke, when Jesus was crucified, just before he said that it was the time for darkness to reign. And when he was actually crucified, the sun stopped shining for three hours. So the world was in darkness. So that's what happens when you kill the light of the world. But the good news for us is that he didn't remain dead. And on Easter Sunday, what we celebrate is the fact that the light of the world was resurrected. Now, we've looked at the very first mention of light in the Bible. And now we're going to look at the very last mention of light in the Bible. As you can see, I've done a study through the Bible about light and I really recommend you do it. I think it's a fascinating one to look at as you go through the Bible. Um, but in Revelation 22, verse five, it says this and it's talking just to introduce it. It's talking about when we are in heaven or like when heaven is the new earth. Um, so when everything's amazing and there's so many promises in that part as well about where God says there'll be no more tears and no more mourning, which we love. Um, but this bit with me, with my fear, my slight fear of darkness, um, this particularly makes me happy. And it says this, there will be no more night. There will no, they will not need the light of a lamp or the light of the sun for the Lord God will give them light and they will reign forever and ever. I think what a wonderful thing to think there will be no more darkness. I think it's fantastic. So we've looked at the start of the Bible. We've looked at when Jesus was walking on this earth and when we killed him. And obviously then when he came back to light. But what about now? What about us living our lives now? What um, has light and darkness, apart from what time of year it is and if we like summer or winter, but what has light and darkness got to do with us now? Well, there is so much. The Bible is packed full of stuff about light and dark. But the bit I want to focus on today is in 1 John and it's chapter 1 and it's verses 5 onwards. And it says this, God is light. In him, there is no darkness at all. Like we've said, science says that. Darkness cannot exist where there is light. Darkness is the absence of light. So God is light. In him, there is no darkness at all. If we claim to have fellowship with him, yet walk in the darkness, we lie and we do not live by the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us from all sin. 
Now, interestingly, listen to this next bit because he goes on to talk about sin. And I think it's really relevant with regard to this light subject. Because it's already just said, if we walk in, if we claim to have fellowship with him and yet walk in the darkness, we lie and there's no truth in us. But listen to this bit about we deceive in ourselves. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. So can you see where the language is repeated there that if we walk in darkness, we lie and do not live by the truth. And then it says, if we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. And then it says this, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. And then it says, if we claim we have not sinned, we make him out to be a liar and his word has no place in our lives. So this light and darkness is really important. And in another part of the Bible, it talks about how we were once in the darkness and now we have been brought into the dominion of light. And what's really important for us is that when there is sin in our life, if we try to hide it, and we keep it in the dark, then that stays in that dark domain. It's, it stays in Satan's domain. But if we bring that sin into the light by confessing it, then it is in God's domain and something can be done about it. That's why confession of our sin is so important. It's really important that we confess it to God. But also, it's so powerful when we talk to somebody else who we trust. So it can be a pastor, it can be a connect group leader, it can be a trusted, mature Christian friend. If we talk to them about our sin as well, it brings our sin out of the darkness into the light. When our sin is in the darkness, Satan has domain over it. He can shame us. He can keep us in this awful guilt. But when we confess it to God, it says here that he forgives our sin. We bring it into the light. When we bring it into a light with a friend, we can pray together for forgiveness. But also we have someone to be accountable to. We have someone who can love us despite the sin and take that shame away, just like Jesus does, because he loves us despite the sin. So I hope that's really helpful and practical for you today, that we can live in the light, that we, I love light. I just love the summer months and I just really hope that this light time will remind you of Jesus, who is the light of the world. Jehovah Ori, the Lord, my light. God bless you. Don't hesitate to get in contact if you'd like me to be that person who you talk to, because I'm so happy to speak to you and pray for you with regard to sin. And don't worry, you're not going to shock me. I will not shame you. I hope to see you soon. God bless you. Bye bye.